and um, I have to remember how to do all this stuff, taking my little long vacay. So getting ready for next week too, but you know, um, what did I do? I think I was kind of like a beached whale because it was a hundred and a bazillion outside. I mean, it was even too hot to go ask your neighbors if you could swim in their pool. That's how hot it has been. Also, it is so weird here in Livermore right now. Um, we are on the south side of town and it's it's like it's like an eclipse is happening and and it's not even that the air i mean the air is bad but it, there's ash there is soot everywhere so this morning i went over to uh trader joe's and that's facing north and it was like i couldn't believe it and so my daughter so i came home I was out in the parking lot, my car, for 15 minutes, and it was covered in ash. So look at Dan's next door, his truck, you know? That was from, I don't even know, starting what? And, I mean, there's no sense in washing it off. And then it is, of course, from the fires. I'm sorry, if you're not from here, you don't know. We California is burning down. It's it's horrible. And I think the worst of it was a gender reveal party where something caught on fire. I mean, come on, people. We live in dry brush here. Um, look at this, you guys. The Benicia Bridge is mm, 35 minutes north of us. That's this morning. So we're all staying inside. Uh, we're being good, other than if you have to go to the grocery store or whatever. Um, and what's weird is they're saying the air quality was worse yesterday. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So you guys sent some... Oh, the part about Labor Day that I didn't like is that I missed you guys. <laughs> I really have count, come to count on you. So, um, but it was good. I needed time to pull myself together. I'm working like mad on this quilt. I actually have the borders, but I'm not gonna show you yet. So I'm very happy with the resolution of this. Um, before I get to what you might wanna make sure you got in your hands um, when we start in on this, I'll give you a shopping list if you're interested. Um, in a little bit, but let's at, let's let's talk about some questions. Amy asked, "How do you store how do you store your um, whips?" My work in progress. Well, Amy, I try and finish my quilts, okay. But the one thing I don't want you to do is put it in any sort of um, airtight plastic container, because what can happen is is that if it gets damp in there, it will mold. A little dots, dark dots, and it will not come out. So you know, if you do have them like in little Tupperwares, maybe you want to poke a couple holes in top. Um, I would probably consider more like pillowcases that are labeled or whatever, or just another novel thought, finish them. <laughs> just finish them. <laughs> so, but then Deb said how to store scraps. Now, this is a really good question. Sorry I'm on you, Amy. <laughs> um, her Deb thing was, okay, so let's say you have things less than a fat quarter, you know, but not like that to throw away, although applicators would go digging through your trash for that. So, uh, what I do, because I use the, well, I will be showing you what I do. If the piece is a precious piece to me, and precious meaning once in a while, you buy a piece of fabric that's so good you just can't even stand it. It's a sparkle fabric or whatever, and it's just you don't want to run out of that fabric. I might just fold it in with my regular stuff. I use the wire basket system. Um, I, I So what I did was on my Facebook page, I put this question out and it's on my, my public page with, I'm in front of a red wall. Just go there, scroll down and start looking because we are very, um, we're very different people and there's a bunch of different options. I mean, I even at one point had one of those shoe hanger things, you know, and I was stuffing little pieces in that by color. It was before a Susan Carlson class. Um, so just go look on that and see what works for you because part of me too is I'll just get rid of it. But then again, if it's a precious piece and you know what I'm talking about. Okay. And then Donna wanted to know about hand quilting. Donna, in the classrooms at the quilt show, there's a ton of things on hand quilting, but the bottom line is, is that my finger that's underneath 
presses up kind of on the side and the needle rocks on this particular finger. So I kind of go like this and the needle comes down and, and rocks. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so then Mary wanted to know how much fabric for a twin for this next basket quilt. So here's the thing, this is what we're selling, all right? Uh, we are selling this, it's 26 fat quarters, which means six and a half yards. This probably will do a twin for you just fine. Um, what you wanna do, what I would suggest you people do is maybe get a couple more lights that you might wanna add to it, but six and a half yards is a lot. And I call my friend D. Christopher, and yeah, we think twin, queen, uh, if you want something for your bed, you might want to end up getting two of these things, okay? So um, speaking of these things, um, I want to talk about when it's all going to go on sale. We finally know. My pants are on fire, I said tomorrow, but um, they're gonna, it's going to go on sale Friday at 9 o'clock Pacific time. Okay, we've got to let the West Coast kids have a shot at this. Friday, nine o'clock Pacific time. Now, orders over $100 have free shipping. So if I'm gonna show you a couple other products, you might already have it from the cave thing, but in case you're new here and you wanna you know, get with us, here are some other products you might consider. And remember you guys, you can work from your stash, the, no issue. And I was thinking about what are we gonna be learning in this class? We learned about the color wheel last time. This one we're gonna learn about value, a lot about value, and that's whether it's light or whether it's dark. And um, Edita has just done a really beautiful job. In fact, I'm sending her pictures of this and she goes, I'm making a basket quilt too. Maybe we need to do something together sometime. Edita Sitar. Yeah, Edita, that might be a blast. Okay, so this is the fabric. Okay, and the other thing is, I'm sure most of you have this, but if you don't, you're sunk without it. It's the quick and easy block tool. Please get it from our site, thequiltshow.com, because there's other quick and easy block tools made by CNT, and I want to make sure you get the right one. The other one doesn't even have baskets in it, okay? I discovered something in making this. Um, I'm pretty excited about um, this new uh, tool that I was playing with. This is called a Sew Steady. Uh, let me, oh, I will talk about, oh, okay, before I go, we're still waiting for that color wheel, and uh, actually, Suzanne is checking the status of it right now, you guys, I am so sorry, that was a massive screw-up, I will own our screw-ups, that was not ours, not to make excuses, but it's, it, it's infuriating for us too, okay? So I don't know if you guys have seen this. I call these slidey mats, but the real name of this is a So Steady Grid Glider. And I just got it, okay? I, well, no, I got it about two weeks ago and I've been playing with it. So it does two things. It is for your domestic machine, not your sit-down Q20 or anything like that. It does work as a slippy mat for when you're machine quilting, but then they did something smarter, and I wish I, I wish I had thought about this. They put these grid lines on it, and they're, you know how I told you I lead in with my, let me see if I can blow this up a little bit. I lead in with my quarter inch mark on my Bernina, and then this extends it even down more, so I found myself when I was sewing that I would be looking down here. Oh, you can't even see because I'm out too far. I was looking down here somewhere for my lead in, not up here. But then the other thing it has, and I'll be demoing it, are these other lines so that when you go to say do your half square triangles when they're a square and you sew on each side of the line you have to draw, you do not have to draw the line. You can just use these. And or if you're doing flip and sew, you don't have to draw a line down the middle. You can just use this. 
I found this to be exceedingly wonderful. Um, and it is, it's got sticky on the back so that you can roll it up and take it with you and, you know, put it on another machine or whatever. It's like our goddess sheets, only it just has more, okay? Again, it is for your domestic. It is not for one of your fancy dancies. The other thing I found myself using was, um, probably a lot of you already have this, the self, a quilter select self erase marker. And what I used it for specifically was the basket handles, which you can see above my head. There's blue tape. Those are so easy to do. You're going to love them. Um, but I used this for the placement. And then last but not least, I used the Quilters Select um, Quick Drying Fabric Glue for the triangles. And if you were in the other class, you know what I'm talking about. And it is the bomb, okay? So here's the, okay, oh, how much, how much, how much? This, I think, is like $79.99 or something like that. And that's pretty darn good for that many um, fat quarters. It was real cute. Yesterday I went in because we cut, oh, no, I didn't on this one. I, we cut these, okay? And I went to work yesterday and it looks like Santa's elves are in overdrive. Overdrive. So let's take a look. Oh, shoot. Look at the time. Okay. Well, that was an ad. That didn't count. <laughs> So here is, um, oh, the other thing we have right now too are Brassica One Yard Bundles. We were able to put that together. I don't know how we ended up with it, but we've got that in the store too. So remember, Friday, 9 o'clock Pacific time is when I would go shopping. All right, so this is FTs, and I, I believe we were looking at this in progress, and I got to tell you, I am just jamming on that outside border. And you guys make notes of this for when we are going to do um, the basket quilt, basket puzzle. Okay, so this one, um, K N K N N Ketter, Ketter. She um, she would got she, she got scared halfway through, and but she forged on. And I'm saying right on, you did it. And then there was somebody else that sent another one that was more basic than this. And she was like, oh, I don't know that I want to share it because there's some pretty, you know, sophisticated things going on. Sister, you share. The only reason I'm not showing it is the image was too small. It would not have resonated. Okay, we saw this one going forward with Karen. Or I don't know if Karen or Karen commented on this. But anyways, look at that border. I would not have thought of that. And that is just happiness on a platter being served up. Don't you guys think? Okay, here and here's Sandra's Sandra Sandra. Um, look at what Sandra did um, on the center, and I just I got to go back and look at Karen's again. Hold on, I'll come back to you, Sandra. Shoot, no, this isn't the one. Somebody actually sewed a face mask. <laughs> in one of their blocks. Awesome. Um, I love the sashing just by adding those little stars. It adds a little something to the whole thing. And um, look at that basket in the bottom one. Who game's on for you. Okie doke. And then this last one, I don't know what your name is, but um, this made my heart just sing in 10,000 different directions because she added a bunch of wonky and she added what I call elements of surprise, which are those sticks and stones, which are in my wheelhouse. And I will tell you right now, I would have never in a million trillion years have thought of that. So I say, congratulations, that just blew my socks off this morning and it takes a lot to blow my socks off. So what I want to do now is I want to get over to um, PowerPoint. And actually, I have a surprise. It's not just Jean Wells today. So this is Miss Jean Wells. She is, uh, she is a dear friend of mine, a mentor of mine, and has helped guide me through the whole journey of my professional career. Her work was very geared to traditional in the onset. It uh, then now, she said to me at one point, she said, look, when you put your kids through college and you're settled with your retirement funds slash earning money, she said, you're gonna, something 
magical is going to happen. And it's true. I have started doing, although coming back to these uh, traditional ones has been a blast, but I've gone on an artful journey. And I also think that artful journey has helped me look at what I'm doing very differently in the traditional form sense. So the other thing you would know Jean from would be the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show. It's always the first sacred Saturday, no, second sacred, oh, don't want to get that one wrong, second sacred Saturday of July. And it's through Jean's class right now. I'm taking Rosalie Dace's uh, workshops, and you might want to check that out. I don't think they've put up the first one yet again, but oh man, Rosalie just continues to blow my mind. She's such an inspiring teacher. So Jean um, lived out in the country, and I'd say maybe about uh, less than 10 years ago, they bought a lot in town in Sisters and built their house. And the house is absolutely phenomenal. It backs onto a cow field, and then you can see on the right-hand side, peeking back there, are one of the Sister Mountains. So here is her living room, and... I look into the kitchen, left-hand side. I look into the dining room, right-hand side. And then that back door takes me to her studio. Also, you guys, she was um, a legend. Go look her up, Jean Wells, and you get a t complete tour of the house and everything, and it's fabulous. She's been on the show several times. So this is her studio. And there are several things that I find extremely charming, charming, is that a word? Charmily, charming about it. Uh, one of the things is if you go up those stairs on the left-hand side, that's a loft for the grandkids, which I think is just beautiful. It's not a huge space, but is exceedingly efficient, exceedingly. So she, like Freddie, has moving design walls so she can work on various projects in the meantime. Also then behind the design walls are stacks of fabric. I've shared with you that I could not live that way because I'm too much of just a slob. I mean, my, my wire baskets explode, okay? So, but for some people, this is the way to go. Oh, I love her little toolbox. I have more tools that I know what to do with. She has pared it down to what she needs and that's it. You know, she, her sewing room before was an entire basement of a house. I mean, it was an apart, it was bigger than an apartment size. So she really had to get brutal when it got down to it. But this is the thing that I think is absolutely fabulous. Baker trays, okay? You can... She has them in her mud room, which is right around the corner from her sewing room. And then she can move her stuff in and out, get it out of the way, and then projects. Okay, so there you go, Amy. That's how you could store your whips, something like this. I think it's very, very clever. And again, her place was built for that. Um, Jean, it, Jean, I just continue to watch and... It's just wonderful to watch how her daughter, Valerie, Valerie Wells, who's a designer, is taking over the store. And um, I miss you, Jean. I really do. So now I have to talk about somebody else. And her name is Robin Maimoni. <laughs> Robin Maimoni came into my life when my mom, when my dad had a stroke. So that was like three and a half years ago. And it was quickly established that we were both quilters. And um, I found out she had a boat. And while she's guiding me through the death of my father and the relocation of my mother, I got on, I got on a boat trip with her. Robin is a student. And uh, right now, she is uh, really entrenched with Cindy Needham. Um, Cindy, she's taken several, several of Cindy's classes, of which I'm going to be signing up for one soon. I want to tell you, Cindy Needham has been on the quilt show a couple times. She has a fabulous website with a lot of learning things on it, videos. And Cindy's jam is that she takes antique linens and then quilts the you-know-what out of them. So this is Robin's uh, quilt that she did out of Cindy's. But the other thing about Robin is that she is a creative, period. This is a wedding bracelet that she made 
for her daughter's wedding, and I believe it was built on um, a lace collar. I think she told me a lace collar foundation, and then she inserted super fine wire to get the shape. So those pearls on that go back generation after generation after generation after generation. And I can assure you, Robin, that uh, for future generations, when those boys get married, those their wives to be will be wearing this bracelet. I, I just it blows my socks off. But what you need to know is that she, Robin is exceedingly organized. If we had an organized match between Robin and Libby, I I don't know who's gonna win. Maybe Libby. I don't know. But game on. Okay, so they live in a two-story house, okay? Got to kind of get the situation here. Kids are gone. So upstairs, she had the walls knocked out between uh, two bedrooms. And so in there, she has her long arm, and then she has her sewing machine. You can see in the upper right-hand corner. And I, I, the black featherweight was my mom's. Um, she calls it Naughty Dottie because Dottie was not settling into places <laughs> as we wish she would. Um, so Naughty Dottie lives with Robin. Um, let me tell you something that I did that is kind of a sidestep. Robin, Robin had a company called Senior Solutions and she could get your people in the right place of which she did. And one thing she said when it was time to clean my mom's house, um, and she said, don't, don't sell things. She said, it's just gonna make you mad. And so what I did was um, I told neighbors, people that were near and dear to my mom, um, come in and put posty notes on whatever you want. And if I want, if I, if I want it, I win. And so a couple neighbors did come in and put posty notes. And for the most part, they take it. But Robin and I, the first time we met, we realized we were both quilters. And so, she didn't have a featherweight, and I said, you need to have Dottie. Or you need to have Dottie's machine, thus Naughty Dottie. Okay, so Naughty Dottie is to the left, as well as her Bernina. To the right, there's all this built-in IKEA shelving. And the thing is, is I Libby says this, and it is true. You can spend half your life looking for stuff in your sewing room, okay? But if it's organized, it just makes it a lot easier. What struck me here, and I'm hoping the next slide's it, look to the right-hand side. Oh, I didn't put it in. Those are all her die cutters uh, for her go. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Mine are a huge mess. I'm not enlisting you, Robin, but you aren't completely off my list of let's get it straightened out. Look at this, you guys. This is her um, ribbon. And see, because she does all these different sorts of crafts and art forms, her collection is really quite diverse. Here's her fabric. Opposite of mine. Um, those are slide out drawers. And then she has everything folded neatly in there. Again, may I say opposite of mine. Yeah, oh, there's the go. I mean, look at that. That's brilliant, you guys. And then it's got the little labels on the outside that tells you exactly what they are. And then th these sliding drawer or sliding cupboards were some from some furniture or something like that. But even there, look at all her buttons. Everything, um, if you look on the top shelf, shell beads, pearls, turquoise, it's all right there. Her design wall, uh, there's some more of her work. Her design wall is interesting in as much as... Um, Andy, her husband, put up this on top where these clippy things are on it. So if she wanted to hang something up there and not put pins in it, she can. Oh, and then this, uh, she told me after I took the picture. She puts her batting in Ziploc baggies that you can squeeze the air out of. And so you can imagine the amount of um, space that, that, would, that this takes up that that would get rid of. But this to me is the creme de creme. The first picture I took was my back was to this. Okay, so this is opposite the wall of her design wall. It is her laundry, all right? And, and they are in a two-story. 
And so that makes sense. They live upstairs, and so her laundry's there. But this is not wasted space by any means. Look at the top. There's like those roundy things sticking out of that long, skinny thing. I love my vocabulary. It is so rich with complicated words. Oh, guess what? They pull out, and she can hang her cloth to dry or hang her laundry to dry. And I suppose those are what, I suppose that's what those are designed for, but I wouldn't have thought of it. And then even though she's in her laundry area, look how cute the light is. It's a completely pleasant space to be in. To the left-hand side are hangy shelves. And so they're just like rods with these little S hooks that she can put her stuff in. I, I love it. But this one just really got me, this next one. Her ruler storage area. You guys want to know what those are? For those of you that are grandmas and you, or you're not yet grandmas, that's what the kids are buying to put to dry their bottles for their baby bottles in. And so perfect, perfect to put your rulers in. Would not have thought of that. And then like in any sewing room, like in Yvonne's, like in mine, there are precious things all around that remind her of those she loves and us that love her. Oh, by the way, that's the block tool book I don't want you to get. <laughs> Just saying. And she was the one that brought it to my attention along with one other person at the same time. Kind of looks the same, but that's not the one you want. And then the creme de la creme, although I think it might be the washer and dryer, she just found this antique sewing drawer, sewing chest. So that's in her bedroom. And guess what? She does work in her bedroom too. She's got a, a, a lounge chair and all her uh, Sue Spargo stuff in there ready to go. So that wraps that up. Um, our next installment on Friday are What About We Spaces, okay? Because guess what? We don't all have that. Let me see if I can get back to what I need to get back to. We don't all have big spaces. And uh, I'm gonna show you how my friend works in a closet and some ideas I found on print, we found on Pinterest, just some really great ideas. And I have to tell you, in looking at this, I'm about ready to take a mad dash to Ikea. Well, not really, but I look in my room and there is so much wasted space. It is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. So we have some comments here. Um, John, do you have anything you want to brought in? Yeah, I like that for the batting, Robin. How much is the bundle from, how much? Oh, it's uh, like $79.95 is the bundle from Adita, the pinks. Is the go worth the expenses? You know, my feeling, okay, I'm gonna talk about Robin behind her back. She has issues with her hand. So cutting, it can be a problem. So like, let's say you have arthritic issues and stuff like that. What I love my go for is I love it for circles. I, I can't even imagine not having a go or a digital cutter or a Sizzix or something like that for circles, for clam shells. Um, my my uh, bow tie quilt we made one out of so I could just whip stuff through. Uh, cutting strips, uh, but I know people like if they're going to do a log cabin quilt, man, they just start cutting those strips and putting it, putting it down, putting it aside. If you are going to get a go, don't get the baby go because it will not accept all the dyes. That's just my 10 cents. No, you guys are clear. Wow. Oh, thank you for bringing this up too, Mandy. Watch Jennifer Sampu and Joe Cunningham and Julie Silber. Those ombre, that's the show that's right now, you guys. And those ombre fabrics of Jennifer's are amazing. And um, they're digitally printed. And so digitally printed is one of the new things that's kind of coming on the scene. And she can tell us about it. Traditionally printed, like Edita's here, I think you can only have 16 or 17 colors. Digitally, the sky's the limit. And so she has fabric that will, one fabric, will, which will range from a dark, say, blue to a wispy powder blue. And it's, I believe the collection's called Sky, and it's just beautiful. Um, then also Joe and Julie were on, and I chose them to be on for a segment because 
I get a lot of my inspiration from Julie Silver, who's a quilt, quilt collector. And Joe and I go way back with traditional roots, but we use these antique quilts as our inspiration. So that was a real fun segment, and it might open your eyes to some of the quilts that you see out there and how to adapt. So, okay, Friday, it all goes on sale. And what I want you to know is that you don't have to work with this. You really, really don't. You can get out your collection and start working. Um, and I was going to say something else and I forget what it is. They will start shipping on Friday and Monday. You will have plenty of time, plenty to get it. So we aren't into the crunch that we were in before. I realize that when I get back from my vacation next week, a whole week, I'm still going to have um, a couple more studio things, which is going to include my studio. And, uh, and then we're going to get going. So this has been a total blast to make. Um, I can't wait to get going. You're going to work. You're going to learn value. You're going to learn accurate piecing. And also you're going to learn how to work with blocks of various sizes. That is a go-to trick of mine. I think they make smashing quilts and they can take the ordinary and make it extraordinary. Okay, and I would say this is a confident beginner. Um, some of the blocks might be, I don't want to get into that, but some you might, heck, you're home. I can't think of anything else to do, right? <laughs> so, do you have any other color collections for the quilt? I'm not really a pink person. There are, there will be some blue ones. Yeah, we don't have a lot. There will be some blue ones. So you be on there um, right away. But also, I mean, uh, shop our store. We got some pretty cool stuff there. There's actually a yellow cave bundle that I want to get. I haven't gotten it yet. Um, shop the store. You know, I mean, this is your quilt. This is your quilt. It is not my quilt. And I'm going to give you options for setting and all that good stuff. If you still want to applicate, what about an open space in the big baskets? Would that be too crowded? No, it would not. And I will tell you, Linda, I was thinking about that. If I didn't want to set this this way and I wanted to set it in a more organized way, I could easily see making four of the big basket quilts and putting them in the center facing in or facing out and you could have applique on it which would lead to applique to the outside edge i really wanted to do applique on this but the quilt like a human being when it comes out of the womb has its own opinion on how they're going to roll in life and that's what happened here that's a great question all right, um, so the quilt show just put something up. Oh yeah, don't forget we have quarantine labels that you can print out and put on your quilts. I would strongly suggest you do that. And you guys, I just so appreciate you so much for spending your time with me. And um, let me see, Alex, I've been going through my books and I've come across yours. The book of yours that you don't like, the picture of yourself. Perfect, that makes me happy. So anyways, start searching basket quilts on Google, take looks at them, and then and here we go. So John has something. other colors than pink. Yeah, I already talked about it. We have some blues, but I'm telling you, there's other stuff in the store too. Well, you know what? I think that's about my mom. We're having some issues. She fails. So ciao. Bye. Love you guys. <laughs>